Hey, it's Jeff uh, with Operation St. Cyprian. I'm reacting today to Keith Nestor. I have seen a little bits and pieces of this. Most of this I'm just going in cold. Uh, he is a former Methodist pastor, I believe, turned Catholic. And uh, for whatever reason, on his avatars, he likes to look like that he's bruised and have band-aids. I, I have no idea what that's about. Okay, uh, top five tire things Protestants uh, say to Catholics. Let's go. Catholic, and you talk about your faith, I guarantee you you've heard these things as well. Secondly, I want Protestants to watch this and go, okay, hey, guess what? These Catholics have heard these things. We need some new material, okay? We got, we got to come up with something different because these particular things... They're not new to anybody, and so if we want to have anybody pay attention to our objections to Catholicism, let's come up with new material, okay? And then number three, I just need to vent. So there you go. All right, are you ready? Long intro, we're gonna jump right into this video. Now again, before I jump in, I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm not trying to say that I'm like this super smart guy, because if you've watched my videos, you know that I'm not. But here are five things that I am tired of reading from Protestants that object to my Catholic faith or anybody else's Catholic faith. And the first one is this. This is the number one. Actually, let's go backwards. Let's do the whole backwards thing because it'll be more exciting, right? And maybe you'll watch it to the very end. Okay. Number five. This is number five on the list. You Catholics don't understand the gospel. Boom. Okay. So that's number five, right? I mean, how many of you have heard that, Catholic friends, that well, the Catholic Church doesn't understand the gospel. I had a guy recently comment on one of my videos and he said, please Catholics, explain to me the gospel. And I, I just wrote him back, I said, are you saying that because you really don't know what the gospel is? Or are you saying that because you don't think that I know what the gospel is? And of course, no response. But I think ultimately there's a, there's a misconception out there from a lot of Protestants that the Catholic Church doesn't know or preach the gospel. And friends, it's just a tired thing to say. The only people who really say that, in my opinion, are usually like Catholics who didn't pay attention and then they left to become Protestants. And then they had, they, they had this experience where they went to a church and someone told them this is the gospel. And it didn't sound like things they'd heard before in the Catholic church. So then they thought, well, if that's the gospel and it's different than what I heard, and they're telling me that Catholicism doesn't understand the gospel, then it must be true. But it's just not true, friends. If you want to know what the gospel is, you just have to pay attention in the mass. Just pay attention, okay? Because what is the gospel, friends? Let me just break it down to you really simply. The gospel is the good news that God sent Jesus Christ into this world to die on the cross for our sins and he rose again from the dead. I mean, this sounds pretty familiar, right? You're like, wait a minute, what? this isn't Catholic. That's, you know, no, this is Catholic, friends. This is what the Catholic Church teaches. In fact, all of you Protestants out there, you wouldn't know what the gospel was if it weren't for the Catholic Church who told you what it was, okay? So keep that in mind. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. If we put our faith and trust in him, then we can be saved, okay? Oh, so that's the good news. Christ died so we can be saved, all right? This is why they don't have the gospel and they don't understand the gospel. When you add works to faith to be accepted before God, which is the definition of justification I'm going to use with the Pauline sense of justify, not the James sense of justify. When they conflate sanctification what we in the protestant world would call sanctification growing in holiness with justification which is the declaration of righteousness before god they conflate the two so their good news is that you can work for your salvation you can keep your sal you're given salvation initially in baptism and you can work for it that is not good news that is bad news because god is holy they, their main problem, I believe, is they don't understand the fully what God's holiness entails. Is that God doesn't do half measures. God has to be 
deal God deals with perfection all right that is his standard be perfect like my, your heavenly father is perfect that's the standard and once you add works this is why we should all memorize Galatians 3:10 which I have <laughs> uh uh, I used to have memorized, but I, I don't have the on the tip of my tongue right now. So let's just look this up. Galatians 3.10. To see Paul's logic here. Okay. For all who rely on works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. Now I know there will be uh, arguments that works of the law is just the ceremonial stuff. We can deal with that in the comments. I'm planning on dealing with that in a later video. Um, I have been for a while. Why can't you be justified by your performance, according to Paul's logic? The, the, the rationale is, is because you can't do everything perfectly. All right? You'll be under a curse. who does not abide by all things written on them. You're going to covet you're going to not love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. It's, a con again, compromise on God's holiness. Let's keep going. Okay, we're not saved because of our works. We're not saved because we're of the right religion. We're saved because of Jesus Christ. Now, of course... In Roman Catholicism, you can't really know you're saved. You can't have any assurance of salvation because you have to the initial salvation that comes through baptism or whatever uh, can be ruined as soon as you commit a mortal sin. And you don't know when you've committed a mortal sin or 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 whatnot. If I was Roman Catholic, I would be in the confessional all day long. There's more to it than that. And that's where they go, aha! You Catholics, you always add stuff to the gospel. You add things like man-made traditions. Well, guess what? So do you. you. We add nothing that's not taught in the scripture or in the deposit of the faith. And basically, it boils down to this, friends. You receive what Christ has done for you. You receive the grace through the sacraments. And you, will, you do your best to live accordingly. Hey, Keith. I want you to see this. How's doing your best doing? Is it according to God's standards? Is it doing is doing your best perfect? It's not. You know that. You've converted to the work you you basically sold your birthright like uh, Esau. And uh, I hope you repent and can get it back just like the Bible tells you to, okay? So if that, now I know people wanna get real smart and be like, oh, well, that's not the gospel. The gospel is that God did, yeah, give me a break, okay? If you wanna argue about what the gospel is, you go ahead and do that. But to act like the Catholic Church doesn't teach the gospel, I mean, go to mass. The entire focus of the mass is that Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. And you can leave mass and commit a mortal sin, and go to hell. Okay? Um, Hebrews tells us that the Christ's sacrifice, it con you know, contrasting it with the, the Levitical system, the Levitical system could not perfect those who draw near. Well, the Mass can't perfect those who draw near because they have to keep going and going and going and going. You, you, you've, what have you traded? You have traded a sacrifice in the biblical, aka Protestant system, that perfects those who draw near. We are washed in the blood. There is no need for repeated sacrifice. And we are celebrating, receiving, and offering that sacrifice to the Father of the Lamb of God. That sacrifice that was presented one time, okay? It's not a new sacrifice. It's the same sacrifice presented again, made present to us in the Eucharist. I know I've already lost some people here, but just trust me. The Catholic Church understands the gospel. If you don't want to trust me, 
go to mass sometime, actually go without your stupid chip on your shoulder and pay attention to what is read and said in the mass and you'll hear the gospel. Okay. So that All right. So he's about to get to number two, but let's just reiterate that the repetitive Levitical types uh, uh, sacrifices is is what you have in the mass, where you are not made perfect. You have to continually do this. You could um, he, Hebrews tells us uh, that the the sacrifice of Jesus perfects those who draw near. The mass does not, and according to Roman Catholic theology, they're the same sacrifice, right? The sacrifice of the cross is represented. This is why the Mass is a blasphemy.